friend for help, and what do you do? You leave your brain in the back seat of a cab. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I love romance novels. I just got caught up in the story. Will you forget the story? Who cares what that jerk wrote? Look, if I am going to get a job at this publishing company, it is my synopsis that counts. They're going to want to know if I know the difference between a good novel and a bad novel. Well, I think it's a good novel. Who cares what you think? <laughs> gotta get this job. I'm sorry, No, Mel. you're not. Yes, I you, am. No, you're not, because you I only think too. about yourself. You don't care about anybody. We don't put that letter down and listen to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mel. No, you're not. Yes, yes, I am. Look, go ahead, read me your synopsis, and I will tell you if it sounds professional. Please. No, OK. <laughs> At times in the manuscript, the author's development of his two main characters drags a bit. <laughs> you like that? Yeah. <laughs> but just as they approach predictability, the author reveals new, intriguing, and sometimes frightening qualities, as in Chapter 6, when the hero is accused of 27 murders, but his fiancée still refuses to call off their wedding. I can't believe she'd marry that guy. I didn't. <laughs> Sorry, Nell. I, I really, but a big publishing house like Macdillan and Loud wouldn't have sent you a manuscript to read if they weren't impressed with your interview. Well, it, it wasn't exactly an, an interview. It was more like an informal meeting. You see, I was sitting across from this man at lunch, and I was admiring his liver. Oh. <laughs> And it was the last piece. <laughs> anyway, he said that he was an editor at Magdalene and Loud, and I casually mentioned that I was going to be needing work now that I was back in the States after all those years as a fool in the A fool in the bed? A foreign correspondent in Tibet. You know, I don't tell you everything. Oh, come on, Adam. So what? I. I'll start off as a reader, but who knows? One day I could be an editor. No. Oh, yeah. Mel, this is an eviction notice. We gotta be out of here in 30 days. I can't do that. I just changed all the light bulbs in this place. <laughs> I just ordered stationery with this address. I just found the key to my mailbox. Eddie, now, please, please. just calm do? down. Calm down. Calm down. Don't get hysterical. I will take care of everything. No, no, you can't do that. You've got the job to worry about. You just concentrate on your synopsis. I'll go out and start looking for another apartment. No, Eddie, don't do that. Why not? You found this place. <laughs> phone calls? No. Where have you been? Out. Well, what have you been doing? Nothing. <laughs> but you can die from the heat. Yeah, this is what New Yorkers call an Indian summer. And no wonder the Indians sold it to them for $24. <laughs> <laughs> can I get you some iced tea? No, yours is just fine. <laughs> just count on the sweet side. Sorry. Are you sure I didn't get in the phone calls? No. The publishing house just got your synopsis yesterday. And as good as it was, these things take time. Yeah, you're right. But come on, we gotta look for that apartment, girl. Yeah. Sweet Mrs. Martin will be down to watch the boys in a few minutes. Need some help? No, I know I got Okay. Look, I circled some rentals that look interesting. I want you to check them for me. All these. All these places are in Long Island. I don't want to live in Long Island. What's wrong with Long Island? It's not New York City. I want to live in Manhattan. No, Long Island is very close to Manhattan. 
out of your cheeks or very close to your lips, but when it comes to getting kissed, there's no doubt where the action is. <laughs> you forget the city, Nell? You're being foolish. Oh, I'm being foolish? And you're being what you always are, dull. You don't want to live in New York City because you are dull. I am not saying that you are the dullest person in the world, but you are definitely the dullest black person. I am not dull. Saying I am not dull is dull. <laughs> Look, Nell. Apartments in the city are expensive. Now, you don't have any money, and even if you get that job, which you haven't yet, we just can't afford those prices. Addie, we have a chance for a new and exciting life. Of course apartments are gonna cost more than Manhattan, but they're worth it. I mean, just look here, look here. Look at all the extras you get. Here's one that has a fur pool. <laughs> What's a fur pool? An abbreviation, F-R-P-L, fireplace. I knew that. <laughs> OK, well, well, here's another one. It's in Manhattan. It has three birds, one fur pool, and a mod kitch. And look at the price. But in Long Island, two fur pools, three birds, great low, immediate eye. Oh, yeah, we can afford this one. It's in Greenwich Village, and it sounds wonderful. And when I get that job, we'll be able to afford the rent. Well, what to say? It's in English. Apartment for rent, big. <laughs> oh, Abby, you're gonna love this new apartment. You're gonna thank me for the rest of your life. In fact, you may even want to get down on your knees and lick my hand, but that won't be necessary. Oh, Nell, we haven't even seen the apartment. We may not like it. And will you just learn to trust me? Trust you? Yeah, just shut up, OK? Listen, it's a fantastic neighborhood within three blocks. We got restaurants, we got a deli, we got laundries, we got a park, and Eddie, there are 27 places that I can buy some shoes. I knew it. Just I shut up, Eddie, just shut up. Oh, Eddie, look. Honey, we could get bargains right here on the street. Well, that's just a bunch of junk jewelry, and it's probably all stolen. A bargain's a bargain, Addie. Hi. Hi. Oh, how much is this necklace? You got a sharp eye, lady. That's my finest piece. 18 carats, solid gold. For you, 20 bucks. <laughs> I want you to watch how I operate. Well, I don't think you should just shut up and trust me. I'll give you two bucks. So. <laughs> Did you see how I brought him to his knees? Oh, no. You didn't have one more word out of you, and I'm going to snatch your tongue out of your mouth. Trust me. Ah! Addy, this is it. This is it. Is this a gorgeous building or what? <laughs> oh, Addy, this is the best apartment building in the whole neighborhood. Oh, and look, right downstairs, we got us a Spanish restaurant. <laughs> you ladies are very lucky indeed. You know, this apartment is one of a kind. Why don't you two go on in and look around a bit, and I will be right back. Go on, just trust me. Well, isn't this just perfect for us? I mean, don't you just love it? I hate it. <laughs> huh? I hate it. 
No, it's it's dirty and it's old. I mean, there must be hundreds of other apartments that are better than this in Manhattan. Yeah, but we don't have a lease on any of them. Well, we don't have a lease on this place either. <laughs> What? That's what I was doing today. See, I met the landlady and I signed a lease. This is ours. You signed a lease without talking to me about it first? Yeah, I know you love it. Well, you're wrong. I don't love it. I hate it. Come on, you don't mean that. I do mean it. Now, you know, you never think of anyone but yourself. I mean, you'll never change. I wish I had never asked you to move to New York. I can't believe you signed a lease without my consent. I mean, you, you don't have any money. You don't even have a job. Who did you put down as a credit reference? Me? <laughs> I don't need you as a credit reference. I don't need you for anything. I haven't needed you for anything in over three years. Ever since you loaned me that old ugly evening bag of yours where the beads kept dropping off until the onion dipped and my date swallowed whole. <laughs> and another thing, you old pea brain girl. If you had any imagination at all, you would see this place could be great for us. You know what? I take back what I said about you being the dullest black person in the world. <laughs> no. You are the dullest person of any color! <laughs> now get out of my apartment! <laughs> Don't you walk out of my apartment when I am screaming at you! Come back here, I'm not through! Time I when I was four. <laughs> oh, how nice. You've only been here a few weeks and already you've learned how to come home like a New Yorker. <laughs> well, the boys and I were just going for a little walk. Okay. Mrs. Mine, hold it. <laughs> what do you need phone calls to me? There was one phone call, and little Matthew answered the phone. Oh, Matthew, come here, quick. Come, come, come here, come here. Who was the phone call for? You. Well, who was it? Some lady. Well, was she from MacDillon and Loud? I mean, did she leave a message? Did she leave a number? I'm only five. <laughs> you may never see six. Now we have to talk. Addie, I would rather kiss a dog on the mouth than talk to you. <laughs> Don't make me the bad guy. You're the one who was dishonest with me. Dishonest? I wasn't dishonest. I was being thoughtful. Because you had been so nice to me and my boys, I thought I would be nice to you and try to help you find an apartment so you won't have to live in this old roach motel. <laughs> But you know what, Addie? It's just like you not to appreciate all the wonderful things I tried to do for you. Oh, please, Nell. I mean, it's one thing to be dishonest with me, but don't be dishonest with yourself. You didn't do this for me. You did it for yourself. You're trying to run my life just like you try to run everybody else's. I 
try to run your life because I'm your friend. Oh, please, your man. only oh, friend. Get out of when here. you were in Alabama, I, I was your only hear. friend. <laughs> when you were in Glenlord, I was your only friend. You had to import me here. <laughs> There are 10 million stories in New York City, and you ain't in any of them. You know, I don't know how we ever became friends. Oh, I'll tell you how we became friends. Because when we were little girls, I was the only one that took pity on that tall, skinny, ugly little girl with no personality. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, did it ever occur to you that I was the only one who took pity on that short, fat girl with the big mouth? <laughs> hey. I think we have said everything two people can say to break up a friendship. And you do want to break up this friendship, don't you? <laughs> I said you want to break up this friendship, don't you? <laughs> no. Well, if Skinny is willing, <laughs> it's all right with Bubba. <laughs> all right, Skinny's in. Now, look, we still have to talk. I mean, being friends is one thing, but being roommates is entirely different. Now, if we're going to live together... I know what you're going to say. You're going to live with each other. We have to be completely honest with each other. We have to tell everything about ourselves, no matter how personal. You go first. <laughs> Why? Because you always go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, apparently I sometimes get up in the middle of the night and take my pillow somewhere, and then I go back to bed. Now, I never remember doing it, but sometimes when I wake up in the morning, my pillow is gone. <laughs> then later on, I find it, you know, sometimes it's in the living room or in the hall or in my car. Once I found it in the oven. You know, uh, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. But no, you said you wanted me to that. That was you before everything. I knew you were a wacko. A <laughs> oh, wacko? That's just a, you know, a term you use in psychology. Oh, wow. No, go ahead. Go on. Well, let's see. What else? I talk to mechanical things. You know, like coffee pots and blenders and <laughs> pots, you know, stuff like that. Well, maybe it's because you're lonely. No, it's because mechanical things don't like me. They're all against me. Well, do you think they're the ones taking your pills? <laughs> no. If I talk to something and give it a personality, it just makes it easier for me to deal with. I mean, everyone is not mechanically inclined, you know. So, uh, what odd little quirks do you have? None. <laughs> oh, I can't oh, help yeah. it, Addie. Oh, I just yeah. happen to be a perfect person to live with. <laughs> I'm not some kind of wacko who walks around talking to Mr. Tolstoy. Besides, <laughs> crazy. You know what? I wouldn't live with you for all the money in the world, which you don't have, because you don't even have a job. There you go with the job again. You know, Addie, that's beneath you, and you are a worm. <laughs> you know, I don't know how I ever asked you to live with me. I don't even like you. You don't like me? Honey, I can't wait to get out of your life. I can't wait to get out of your apartment. Can't wait to get away from you. Hello. Yeah, this is 
snail hopper. What's it to you? <laughs> Mr. Richards? <laughs> Monday. Monday at 9 o'clock. <sighs> Thank you. You got the job. You've got to be a leader. You have a career. Somebody really wants me. I'm not surprised. I knew you could get the job. You're not surprised? No. You're the best. Oh, no, no. You're the best. Roommate. You know, you're a pain. But I love you. I know I am. I love you, too. you girl a little paint and this will look like a new place oh yeah we got to do it in bright colors i guess i can put up with anything for a year <laughs> three <laughs> you signed a lease for three years with an option to buy oh. this is ours <laughs> our first guest okay you go answer it no you get no the no this no, is your no, place so you go no, 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 no i you want you to go no, ahead and i want you to right, get the door right, all right you answer the first phone call, okay? okay. Oh, Addie, <laughs> this has to be the luckiest day of my life. Hello, now. <laughs> I begged you to answer the door. Hi, Mama Mayville. I'm gonna have to get that spring fixed on this door. Uh -huh. Hello, now. What are you doing in a duck like this? Mama, how did you find me? I called your apartment and a sweet lady gave me this address. <laughs> Leave it to you to find a place like this in a slum neighborhood. Mama, this is not a slum. You tell this lady it's not a slum. <laughs> Mama Maybell Nell is right. You know, this neighborhood is full of artists. Uh-huh. I just saw one of them sleeping on your doorstep. <laughs> is he the painter or the poet? Mama, why aren't you in Alabama? Oh, your brother-in-law got a job as a TV weatherman here in New York. They moved, and I moved with them. <laughs> oh, oh. Did she just say she moved with Lord and they moved to New York? Did she just say that on the happiest day of my life? And I'm only 10 minutes away on the subway. Did she just say she's just 10 minutes away? Did she just say that? You know, turning this place into something livable will be a challenge. But with a little work, we can do it. Did she say we or us? <laughs> Green will be nice in the living room. I find green a very soothing color. Uh oh.